Islamabad, in Urdu, the city of Islam. Its showcase, the King Faisal Mosque, one of the largest in the Muslim world. Pakistan's young capital was built in just 50 years. And yet amid the brand new minarets and luxurious houses lies a neighborhood out of another age. It's known as the French Colony in remembrance of the French Embassy which used to be located there. 5,000 Christians live here without running water, electricity or garbage collection. Samang is a young Christian, 19 years old. He invited us to his neighborhood where Pakistani Muslims never come. The French settlement has a dangerous reputation, so Samang makes it a point of honor to welcome us and introduce his family. This is my grandfather and this is my grandmother. Okay. This is my auntie. Among the Christians who work, they often have poorly paid domestic jobs. This is the case in Samang's family. His mother Mira works for a wealthy Muslim couple. <laughs> Muslims do not like us. They don't like me touching their things. I'm a maid in a Muslim household. I wash the floor, I do the laundry. They don't want me doing the cooking or touching their food because I'm a Christian. The mistrust between the two communities is symbolized by the wall that surrounds the settlement. It was built six months ago. Here it is topped with shards of broken glass. On the other side, the wall is too high to climb over. So now Samang must make a long detour to return home. When I saw that workers were beginning to build, we went to see them to ask them to stop. But they didn't listen and we couldn't do anything about it. Officially, the wall is there to protect the Christians from a dangerous drop into a polluted stream. Last year, two children fell in and they died. But there is something else they want to protect here the residents of the wealthy neighborhood. This man does not know he was being filmed. So living can live in the center of Islamabad. But they are not good people, they are... They are not good people? They are uh, ignorance. You know, ignore. Yes. Ignore and then is a mafia, you know, drug mafia, drug. They are all drug users. All of them? All of them drug users and also drug supplier. Supplier. Uh, yes, sir. As you know, that's underworld. He invites us to approach the wall. A wall that, Close according to him, small. no one wants to tear down. Oh, yes. And uh, who built it? Uh, some owners. They are living here in this side and then this side. Okay. It's Pakistani bureaucrat, like uh, politicians. A few minutes later, he realizes the camera is on. Very quickly, he tones down his words. But I like uh, many people. They are Christian, Hindus, yes. Bhutmad. Yes. It's all, all the nation, all people. One nation in which the bond is Islam. Samang's sister, Smina, is 17. She shows us her notebooks. In her Muslim high school, religion is unavoidable. This is a book for uh, Islamic studies, Anna. Muslims related for Muslims, <laughs> Muslims culture. Yeah. There are Christian schools in Pakistan, but they are very expensive. Too expensive for the residents of the Christian settlement. Here, only little ones can get a Christian education. They are taught by their older sisters who provide all the class materials themselves. They fill in the gaps caused from government neglect. But there is hope that things will improve. The affairs of the Christian neighborhood are now in the hands of Shabazz Bhatti, the Minister for Minorities. It's a new position created just six months ago and occupied by one of the few Christians in the government. And we are here to serve them and we are giving them this hope that their issues will be addressed. They will not be remain neglected. They will not be remain subjugated are second-class citizens. It's the call to prayer, 
Smina, the young Christian who showed us her notebooks a little while ago, is covering her head as she walks past the mosque. When it's the call to prayer, that means they will invoke the name of God. It's for that reason that I cover my head. I am not giving in to pressure, but since they are praying to God, it's a mark of respect. Smina is not required to do this, but she is aware of Pakistani's blasphemy law, a law which, if applied, can send people to jail for seemingly harmless comments and gestures. Five years ago, a blind Christian spent eight years in jail for unknowingly throwing away a copy of the Quran. Khalil Tahir is a Christian lawyer. He has been campaigning for years to repeal the blasphemy law. The, the, the article says, if un, anybody will say anything against the Muslim prophet, uh, Hazrat Muhammad, peace be upon him, if anybody will say anything against him verbally, intentionally or unintentionally, the punishment will be death. Most times, the death penalty is turned into a prison sentence, but the charges are sometimes based on very weak evidence. I will say, no Christian, no Christian will say anything against the prophet of anyone. But it's just like in Pakistan, it's very easy to buy the witness in some rupees. And if you have a personal grudge against anyone, if you have enmity, and if you have any, any kind of uh, just like uh, ill feelings against others, you can use this law. And nobody says, nobody recognizes, and nobody, there is no rational uh, investigation regarding this law. But Khalil Tahir knows this fight is dangerous. Totally, I'm not safe. I know that I'm not safe. I know many people are uh, after me, after me and my family because this bitter experience already we have been facing. And already we have faced physical attack near my home. And even police uh, caught one uh, fanatic outside my home. Uh, he was ready to uh, blast my home. After that, he is not in the jail now. I do not know where is that person, what happened to that person. The Christian community makes up just 2% of Pakistan's population. In a country of nearly 160 million people, that comes out to 3 million individuals. Scattered about the country and lacking resources, they struggle to defend themselves and make their voices heard. And for the residents of the Christian settlement in Islamabad, they know the wall that separates them is not close to being torn down.